What you're about to see is an extended version of me building this house in SketchUp, me drawing it in SketchUp. Uh, it is long, it is kind of boring. It is the kind of thing that you should watch if you really want to see exactly how I did it in SketchUp. And I think that's a really valuable tool for those of you that are looking to design your own house in 3D modeling software like SketchUp. So uh, continue watching if that's what you're looking to do. If you just want to see an overview of the house, uh, of me doing it in SketchUp and just kind of a tour of how I did it, um, just and then move right on to the framing videos and seeing how I actually built it in real life, uh, then you should click here or there or somewhere uh, right now to watch the SketchUp overview video, which is it's about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and it just goes through the finished product. So uh, enjoy, guys, and I hope this is helpful. Okay, so I've confirmed that we got 16 on center all the way from here all the way to uh, here, or all the way to here, rather, to this guy. Now what I'm trying to do is figure out the best way to end this wall is. so basically 16 let me make this a little bit easier to show 16 on center would be right here I'd have to have a I'd have to have a, uh, a guy right like this okay um, you know, that, and that's fine. I can do that, but I'm always thinking about how to be efficient here and where to end my walls and do I want like extra two by fours? Um, because remember, every two by four that's in your wall is is a uh, is volume that you can't put insulation. And while two by four, while wood does have insulatory value, um, not nearly as much as the closed uh, closed cell uh, spray foam that I'm going to be putting in here. And it, and it acts and it acts much more as a thermal uh, thermal transfer um, than the than the uh, the insulation does. So you know I don't want more two by fours than I really have to have. Uh, so let's take a look here. Let's think about this. The issue here is that this wall, this wall over here on the left, um, where the, really the issue is, is that this matching up to my existing model this is where I had the door and I basically I ended this wall I ended this wall right here so I could put the door in the question is does that really matter if I move this door over just a few inches I'm thinking it doesn't if I extend this wall to uh, literally all I'd have to do Yeah, let me just do it, see if it makes sense. Hide this. Hide this. Okay, if I just extend this wall. Oops. It's right there. Okay, good, that component already did it. Okay, and then I get rid of this. And then I move this over, snapping it on the green axis to right there, and then I unhide last. And now I put this in to right there. Okay, so I moved the, this wall over just a couple inches. <clears throat> now I don't have that extra 2 by 4 situation. I have these walls ending 16 on center, uh, like so. So we have, we know we're 16 on center to this point, so 16 right there, we got it. And then right here, we got it. And right here, we got it. So it continues that pattern on really nicely. Um, if I grab this folder, Take a look at my floor plan. 
Is it going to matter if I move that door over just a few inches? No. It is not going to matter if I move it over two inches. Uh, we don't have anything specific that's going just over here. It's going to be maybe a closet, or we were talking about a wood-burning stove, which I think we're not doing now. But we have about uh, one, two, three, four and a half feet from where the door is all the way to where the bathroom wall is. So I think we're 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 fine moving that over a couple inches. Okay, just gonna do a little quick sheathing test. Uh, make sure this wall is all flush, the same way I did the other wall. Okay, so lots of times I end up drawing geometry that I end up pulling to create 2 by 4s right on like a sole plate, for example, like this. Red axis, lock it to the red axis. So 1.5 right there, red axis again, and lock here, and pull. Right? That, that, that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. However, what I need to do... Um, so I don't make any possible errors, is I need to create like a standard horizontal and a standard vertical 2x4 um, component that I can pull in and work with all the time. And I think I want this thing to be really small, like the vertical to be just really tiny so that like I can fit it into anywhere and then just push or pull it to, to fit my needs. So I'm going to make that a component, and I'm going to call it vertical 2x4, right? And then I'm going to I'm going to call this. I'm going to create another one right now. Create some lines here. I'm going to just draw this like this. Lock it to the the, the red axis. Snap. And then I'm going to lock to the blue axis. Point five. And I'm going to lock to the red axis again. And three point five. Then I'm going to come and snap back to my original endpoint. And then I'm going to make a teeny little guy here, like this. Make this a component. I'm going to call this... I should actually rename this 2x4 horizontal. And then I have this vertical. It's probably at the end, yeah. I want to keep them grouped together, so I'm going to rename this. Two by four vertical. Okay. That's save. I guess it's saved. Okay, so now we got our two by four vertical and horizontal. And if I Oops, if I click on that, I get another new one, so I don't want that. Now, I don't want these in the model right now, so if I delete it, it's still in the components list, so I can grab it whenever I want. Um, another thing is I got all these, like, 4x8 sheets of plywood, and I that was good intention before. I meant to do something good with this, but then I ended up not making them unique because I'm not practiced enough in the art of using components, and I have all these copies of 4x8 plywood, um... Well, that's fine to have the copies of them, but my original just 4x8 plywood, it's got a, you can see, it's got a, a gap in it. It's got a cutout. Uh, so I messed that up. Uh, I need to do the same thing with these. So I'm going to delete this 4x8 plywood, because that, actually I can't delete this because, I can't delete this because it'll actually delete it out of my model. Let me see what happens if I delete that. I'm sure I'm using that piece. Try deleting this. It didn't work. I couldn't delete. 
delete it. I don't think it will let me delete it because it's being used in the model. I think it's this one. Ah. I'm just going to rename it to something else. Wait a minute. What happened here? Huh. Yeah. This is getting into me not knowing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, in any case, uh, in, I'll figure this out, but in a perfect world, I'm just going to create these, these, like, basic, uh, these basic, uh, um, components that I can reuse over and over and over again without modifying them. So basically, every time I pull one of these components in and I put it in here, I'm going to have to make it unique because I modify them all and I don't want them to change, the, like, my my basically my template component. I don't want that to change the second I get in here. So um, I have to make this unique before I do anything. But I can't make it unique because interesting. I can't make it unique because it doesn't already have an instance in the model. So if I if I were to copy this now right now I can make this one unique. Yeah. And I can delete the original. So which one is this? It should be two by four vertical number one. Yeah, here it is. And there it is. Yeah, I don't know. There's a there's got to be a better system for doing that. I'm gonna have to figure out what it is. But you get the gist of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Okay. Hate access guidelines. Let me delete that. All right. Now let's go over and get those pull those measurements again. Continue on with this. Three foot two and a quarter. So now another important thing is before when I would draw them, I would able I draw my my face and I would pull up pull my face up to that exact dimension that I needed. I need three foot two and a quarter of length. But now I can't do that because I already have a little bit of length here and I would need to know the difference. Um, I could make this like exactly one inch and then just subtract an inch and pull and all that stuff, but I don't know. I feel like that's really prone to error. So I'm just going to lock a tape measure to the blue axis. This doesn't seem to work. It's interesting. I guess tape measures work differently. Three foot two and a quarter. Okay, so now I can just pull this up to that point. Don't know if I love doing that. That was a little cumbersome, but we will see. Okay, a couple things. Uh, one thing is going to be that uh, I'm going to hold off from putting in all of my uh, my 16 on center studs until I've done all the framed openings. I'll just sweep across the whole thing and make sure everything's 16 on center. I think that makes sense. And then I'm also going to hide 
this whole wall over here because I can't see, can't make sense of much of anything with all this stuff here. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to lock all this, before I forget, I'm going to lock all these, lock all these pieces of plywood too. <clears throat> all the sheathing. So I can't mess any of that up. Huh. Right. You can't hide it if it's locked. Wild. Darn it. I have to lo unlock the whole thing. Okay. Now we can't move it if it's hidden, so we'll be in good shape. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I so I did this with copying all the... creating, grabbing one of my horizontal, one of my vertical components, bringing it in, copying it, then removing the original component, making the, the copy unique, and then copying that one to the other side. It was kind of a pain in the butt, honestly, and uh, and I don't know if I like that. I feel like what I should probably just do is continue drawing my lines, making components out of the objects I create, and just double check to make sure they're lining up properly. And then obviously at the end, we'll double check all my, if everything's flush, with a sheathing test. Um, so I think that's the way I'm going to continue doing this. Another really important thing that I just messed up is that if, <clears throat> is that if, uh, before I get started on this second wall, I have to select the entire wall and make it unique. Because if I don't, let me unhide all, I will be modifying the components on the other side of the, of the tiny house because I copied this wall to this wall originally. So now, if I was to you know, try to uh, hide this, and if I, oops, I'll hide this, and if I was to make a modification to, like, say, this this uh, soul plate here, now because I made that unique, <clears throat> you'll notice on the other side that soul plate is not moving, so that was, it's always critical. The whole make unique thing on components is super critical, guys. Okay, I just want to cut in here and say I started to, if I redo, I started to work my way 16 on center from this side of the of the house, but I realized very quickly that I had a discrepancy here, and that was because this is the side of the house that uh, that I ended the 16 on center on the other side. And I want to keep that consistent. I want to have basically the the back of the trailer be where I start with my 16 on centers and then my very last uh, stud here will be short um, so I actually started this on the wrong side of the house so what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna switch over and start doing my framed openings now starting over here and work my way this way and then I can work my 16 on centers in this direction
just want to fix one thing. Just want to fix one thing before we move any further. Is that I was I have this book given to me by my father-in-law called Architectural Graphic Standards. Um, this thing looks like it's probably from the the late 60s, early 70s, but it's still uh, you know got very legit info for basic framing. And one thing that they said in there is that uh, is that uh, there should be two two plates on the bottom of a windowsill, which whether or not is uh, uh, whether or not is is necessary in this case, uh, I definitely definitely want to do it. So I'm going to do that. I'm a little confused right now because it looks like looks like this sill plate that I have right now is not part of anything. Yeah, it's not even a component. I have to make that a component. There we go. Alright, so that wasn't that wasn't even part of my group here, so I gotta fix that. But Let's take a look. Okay, so what I need to do here is I need to hide this thing. And then I need to push each one of these down inch and three quarters, but they should all go down together because they're components. Okay, 1.75. Uh, let's unhide that. Wait a minute, did I just delete that? I think I just did the wrong thing. Might have just deleted it. Okay, so hide. Edit these and push these down 1.75. Okay, let's unhide. Oh yeah, that's the issue, because I have to be outside of the component. When you're editing a component, it's only going to unhide stuff that's hidden inside that component. So you need to exit your component editing or group editing before you unhide something that you hid outside of that component. All right, so let's see here. Uh, copy this guy. Let's lock it to the blue axis, and then we'll pop down there. Oh, of course, I made a mistake. It's not 1.75, it's 1.5. What am I thinking? Okay. Push these down one and a half, one point five. Okay, and now we'll unhide. Yep, oh, same problem. Get out of this component, and now unhide. Okay, and now I can copy this thing. confused as to what is what here because okay I'm seeing blue lines I think in here I'm confused as to what this component is Let me hide this yeah what's going on with this I made some mistake What is this shape? Why is it so big? What else does it comprise of? Let's try moving it out of here. That's really weird. I can't say I understand that. I don't see any other... Oh! Oh! This has something to do with when I cut out the window. There's extra geometry here left over. Maybe I made a mistake and like drew drew it twice on there. I wouldn't be surprised if I did. That that's something that uh, that has happened to me before. So I just got to be careful about that. All right. Whoops. This is a component, so I need to edit component. Delete those lines with the eraser tool. 
that's it. Let's see now, yeah, that's it. Okay. Where did the rest of my framing go? Probably deleted it. Okay, so now I probably hit it. Okay, so I hid that entire component. Yeah, I'm missing a few pieces out of that component. What I should do is explode this component because that was getting confusing. All right, let me move this thing out again. lock it to the red axis so I can get out of here, get it out of there easily. Okay, so I'm going to edit this component now, and now I'm going to delete those lines that we saw before with the eraser tool. Okay, so they're gone. Okay, so I'm going to move this thing back. Snap it back in. It's not being very cooperative. Is that move from here? Maybe I gotta rotate, zoom in, or something. There we go. Okay. Now I'm also just gonna make absolutely sure because I would, don't want to have that situation again where I'm creating a little ledge. In this case, I had to bring it out in the three. I brought it out in the 3D space. I didn't just pull it out on a single axis. So. When I snap it back in, I want to make sure that it's sitting exactly where it needs to flush with the other frame members. Okay, so we're all set there now. Uh, now we're just going to duplicate this thing, grab it from this corner, and I'm going to lock it to the blue axis by pressing the up key, up arrow, and we're locking to there. Okay, so now we got our double plate under that sill. Um, you know what I need to do? I need to get rid of this wall again. To hide this wall because it's it's very confusing. It gets in the way. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna select from the uh, right to left. Select all these things. Oops, too much. Need to rotate that a little bit so the selection is easier to do. Okay. How is it getting all that? How about we just do a partial select, just the stuff that we're fully touching. No, we don't want that either. That's not going to be enough. Let's try it again from the from the right. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so let's hide this. That's enough to so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, we got our double plate, and I'm going to go and. Uh, do the same thing for the other framed openings. And I wonder, real quick before I just start into that, let's double check to see if we got that same issue going on over here. Uh, it doesn't look like we do. If I move this out, yeah. This one, it didn't. I didn't mess it up. I didn't draw extra lines that weren't on the, fa the, the face of the, the sheathing. Um, which I did over there. That's why I had those extra lines, extra geometry. So here we're all good. So I'm just going to quickly hide this. And we got a couple different components here. 0.5, push that down. These, for some reason, these are... Let's see here. I don't know what happened here. These are not... I must have made these unique, but these are together. Yeah, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a couple things to help out here. I'm going to delete this component, and I'm just going to copy this one because green axis lock snapped here. Okay. <coughs> these are all exactly the same, so they should be copies of the same component, make our lives a little bit easier. Push 0.5. Okay. Gonna unhide last. And now 
we're going to move this down, lock it to the blue axis, hitting the up arrow, and snap to there. We got our double plate. Wait, how did this happen? When I unhid that last, huh, I must have unhid that as well. Huh. And I didn't like, that's not what I wanted. Whatever the case, let me try this again. Unhide. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> One more. <coughs> See what happens when I unhide last. Yeah, I don't know how. I must have messed up. How oh, that wall got unhidden. What happened here? I have some extra geometry. Oh. And I had the entire wall component selected. Okay, locking the blue axis and snap. Okay, so now that I'm working inside this component, when I duplicate when I copy items around inside of, that are part of this component, they, now that new copied item is still part of that main component. Um, what I need to do over here is I exploded this entire component so I could fix that problem with that extra geometry. So now I need to go in and uh, and uh, make all this a component again. I could select them all individually or I could just hide these sheets of plywood first. The sheathing. <coughs> I could do a a uh, right to left select and select most of it. Because um, I don't have an easy way to hide the trailer right now. So let's uh, just make sure that we select everything this time. Because I did miss a few pieces last time. So, oh, looks like I'm missing one over here. Yep. What's nice about control click is that it's just addition. So if you click on something you've already clicked on with control click, it's just gonna it's not gonna remove it. If you shift click, you could see with the cursor now it's plus and minus, so I can actually unselect things and reselect them. So it's nice. Control click is when you just want to get everything selected and you have to do individual clicks. You don't miss anything. Yep. Look at that. I just missed a a windowsill plate. Okay, I think I got it now. All right, let's make this component. And let's try to hide this component. And looks like there's one piece of geometry I was missing that I still had. This I must have been This was the first one I did for the cutout and I think I I messed it up. I definitely drew extra geometry here I didn't need. So I'm glad that just showed up as well. I don't think that would have mattered for the final drawing, but uh, we're going to delete that. Okay. And now we will unhide last. Okay, cool. And now we will unhide. Yeah, this is the thing that bugs me. At this point, in order to get my sheathing back, um, I would have to... I would have to... Uh, unhide all, which is going to make this back wall show up. It's got to be a better way. Maybe it has to do with locking. I'm not sure. I can, pr I can actually play with that and actually test that out. So I'm going to unhide all. Got my sheathing back. I'm going to save. Always remember to save. And Okay, let's get rid of this uh do a right to left select. Oops. Too much. I was getting my trailer component in that selection. Okay, right to left select. Too much still. 
about that. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lock this. How about that? Locked. And now I'm going to. Oh, when it's locked, I can't hide it. It's funny. I guess that just means I can't move it around. If I try to move something locked, it doesn't let me. So. I'm going to undo that lock. Okay, I'm just going to hide this again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'll read up a little bit on hiding. Um, okay, so what would be really smart for me to do right now would be to lock this wall. To lock these components. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to accidentally move anything around now. So I think locking these would be a pretty solid choice. I can always unlock them if I need to. Now I won't be able to move them and mess up uh, the alignment like I did last time somehow. Okay. Alright. Um, I am not going to continue with the sheathing um, because I have, as you guys can see over here, I have, uh, you know, more height and more length to deal with, and I don't know how I want my sheathing pattern, my plywood pattern, to be yet. So I just wanted to make sure that that we were that our framed openings were uh, were working good. Um, you know what? I didn't actually confirm that these framed openings were okay. So let me do that first. Um, okay. So I have a, uh, I still have a component that is a piece of <clears throat> clean plywood here, so I'm going to copy that. And let me first stay on the blue axis. And snap to there. And then let me... I'm going to move it on the green axis. there first. And then I gotta actually move it. I gotta move it one eighth up. And I gotta move it one eighth over. And I can see already I made a mistake over here because I don't think I have any spacing vertically. Yeah. So check this out. I need to fix these. Um, let me move this on the blue axis. One eighth. I'm going to have a problem to fix after this. And I'll move this one. Axis only. Eighth. Okay, so now I got a minor little issue to resolve. Whoa. What's happened? Okay. I gotta pull this face down by one eighth of an inch. Slash eight. There's something I wanted to bring up about this thing too. I was just reading um, in architectural graphic standards that at least for uh, for subfloor sheathing, the uh, the spacing between the uh, spacing between the plywood sheets only has to be one thirty second of an inch. So. I actually got my number of an eighth of an inch from D-Man over at uh, Life Inside a Box, and he was talking about the exterior sheathing on the walls like this, like I'm doing now, and the book was talking about the subfloor sheathing 
Um, I've done an eighth, eighth of an inch on both of these. I have to look into that. I don't know if it's supposed to be what's what. So now I'm getting contradicting information. I, I need to look into it. So that's just something up for grabs here. I don't know if I'm actually going to be spacing an eighth of an inch. It seems like kind of a lot. I imagined it about how this would work, and it's not a problem. We're going to have a like, Tyvek uh, water barrier on the outside of the wall here, and then we're going to have uh, closed cell uh, spray foam, which is a vapor barrier on the inside. Um, so I don't, there's not like any water or vapor is going to be able to get in, but um, yeah, I don't know if this is frowned upon for any reason. Maybe, maybe you guys can, can answer that for me before I can look it up. Okay, so let's just make sure that we can cut out these other framed openings before we go any farther. So to do so, I'm going to select, I have, each, I have to select each of these pieces of sheathing um, that are intersecting in this space individually, and then I use my line tool to draw lines at the intersections on the face of the sheathing. And that's important, that's what I messed up before on that on that first framed opening was that when I was when I was figuring out how to do it I had drawn geometry not on the face of the sheathing I had drawn it like just out in its own new object because I hadn't edited the sheathing component yet um, and when you draw on a sheathing component before you open it up for editing you're just drawing new geometry right on the face that's like a adjacent to the face of that component. So, yep, and I already did something wrong. Something just went wrong here. Yeah, see, I think what I just did now is I think I just drew extra geometry. Yeah, I just drew extra geometry when I drew... Here, let's, I want to I talk this through step by step. Let me undo the lines I just drew. Okay, cool. Let me talk this through. So, I'm going to edit this component, the sheathing, right? There's already a line here. That's the edge of the... That's, that's one of the entities of this uh, that's contained inside the sheathing component. It's one of the edges already. It's a line. So what I need to do is keep that in mind and only draw new lines on the face of the component where lines don't already exist. So after I draw this... Actually, let me, let me actually not even draw... I can, I can do that afterwards. I can show you. Let me pull this... Now that I've drawn a couple lines, let me pull this component out. You move it out off this wall. Move, and we're going to go on the red axis. Lock it to the red axis. Not a good place to do this right now. Lock to the red axis. Okay, let's rotate around it. Okay, so you can see the lines that I drew. And that's what I was talking about. You can see how this is... Those lines are the shape that I was drawing. And I'm actually... Those lines are actually on that... Pe that in that component now, because I drew them on the face of that sheathing. So if I edit this now, I can select those lines individually. See that? and they're inside of the component. Um, so now if I edit that face, now I can just add another line. I'm just basically replicating what I would have done if I was drawing it inside of that framed opening. Um, and I can just select the blue axis, lock it in, and then snap down to the bottom. So now I've replicated that. Now if I was to use the push tool, now I'm actually, I have a new face that I've drawn because that's what SketchUp does when you draw closed lines on the face of another object. And I can push that to negative three quarters. And that is going to make it disappear because it's only three quarters thick. Now I can move that back straight in. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be locked to that... Uh, stop editing the component. And I'm going to be locked to the red axis here, so it's going to go right in. Okay, lock to the red axis, and it looks like it just snapped right in there. Let's take a look, take a peek to make sure.
Yeah. So it did, but it, it snapped. It didn't snap with that gap. It snapped back to this other piece. So let me snap. Let me move it over on the green axis. We'll move it over one eighth. Okay. So now we're back in business. And now our lines, if we inspect them, should be perfectly lined up. Wow. Be careful about what you select. You rotate. Yeah. So look at that. Everything's perfectly lined up again. Um, so that <coughs> is the right way to cut out a framed opening out of your sheathing. So I'm just going to continue with that with those steps and do it for the rest of those pieces of sheathing. And then I'm going to add some more sheathing over here and do it for this one. Um, and then I'm going to move on with the other wall.
Okay, I think what I'm going to do here is not worry about framing this whole piece now because I really need the platform and this this upper wall up here framed before I really get into this. It's going to be a lot easier. <clears throat> so uh, what I think I'll do is I'll just continue framing. I'll get my 16 on centers right starting from this end and just get this wall just as a plain framed 2x4 16 on center wall all the way to here and then I'll start on the end walls and then I can work on the platform and then come back to modifying uh, this uh, or adding in this uh, this door frame door opening right there so we'll get to that So I'm trying to uh, work on this wall here uh, without this one being in the way. And I've been just selecting this entire wall previously and hiding it. But that's become a little cumbersome uh, for a variety of reasons. I need an easier way to show and hide. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create <coughs> I'm going to create a uh, I'm temporarily just create a, a, a layer for this wall. Uh, I'm not ready to make layers yet. Um, and you'll see when I do that later on how I organize that but I just need an easy way to show and hide this wall so I'm going to select this entire wall I'm going to make a group out of the entire thing group all of the individual components and groups that are in there currently and I'm going to now put that group <clears throat> as you can see the selection is a group uh, now and I'm going to put that into layer of wall one so now what I can do is I can just easily show and hide that wall at will without having to worry about unhiding uh, certain, certain objects later on. Okay, so while we have this wall out here, <clears throat> let's, uh, nope. Okay, so now let's go on to framing out this wall over here. So let me unhide. Okay. So we got to figure out, just like how we did on the other wall, we got to figure out what the logical breaks are going to be. I mean, I did the logical breaks. Um, we got one guy that ends right here, little guy. And we got this big guy that goes all the way to here. <clears throat> and then we have another guy that starts right here and goes to the end. Now, as you remember, on this other wall, we ended up just doing this little wall right here and the whole rest of this thing is one giant wall because of where the framed openings uh, as compared to where the headers were we couldn't have a logical break anywhere that made sense uh, so let's take a look at our at our other original model and let's see if we can arrange that somehow to to work for us um, I think we can because now this door is going to be off to the side of the wheel well. I think we can do... Oh no, so we have this problem. We have the same old problem that we had. Yeah. Is this window... Here, I think the big question is, is this window gonna fit to the side of the wheel well? Or, not the wheel well, the, uh, the fender. So we got six foot, half inch to the edge of that <coughs> king stud for that framed window opening. What do we got here in space? Six foot seven inches. Uh, so, yeah, so this presents the same issue I didn't like before that we were going to have like a six inch sole plate if I separate those. Um, you know, as much as I don't want to do this, I think we should probably break this up the exact same way we did for the other side. And this should be one wall section and then 
Now, see, the problem is, see, here's the problem. If we do one big wall section for this entire length there, this is what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to kind of skip ahead here before I even get to it, guys, but I need to explain this. Um, we're using platform framing, which is what you see here. It's this, basically, it's the platform. It's like a separation between the two, essentially, floors of the house. It allows you to create a platform, which I'm using for the lofts, um, so those lofts have a plate to sit on. Um, if we weren't doing this, um, like, like I'm doing in this small little area here, this is called balloon framing. Um, and balloon framing has a different way of attaching uh, second and third floors. Uh, we don't need to get into that right now. But, and even though I'm not attached, this is just clear story here. It's essentially, I'm just calling it balloon framing because it's breaking through the platform right here. And uh, so the issue with that is, is that the way I did this is that this right here, if you can see where the blue is at, this right here, this piece is a single frame piece. It's a weird one. It's like an L shape. Um, and then this is a separate one. Actually, no. So this this could... I could actually do what I want to do. I could maintain this same type of design where I have this L-shaped piece here. And then I can have this wall section. And then I can have this big wall section just being both. I could just make this as one piece and the fender would literally be like right here. Yeah. The only thing I do not well, I guess I have no way around it. I'm going to have a tiny little sole plate between the door and the fender. There's no way to avoid that. Okay, so it's going to be three sections. Originally, in this drawing, I had four sections. I had one, two, three, four. And the way I'm going to do this now, I'm going to have one, two, three. That's going to be my plan. Um, because my issue is is when I when I frame over this header I don't want to have a teeny little soap plate here and over here on both sides I just would rather this be one bigger monolithic wall I'm gonna, there's no way to avoid having a little soul plate on this side because I only have a few inches between the, the fender and where the this the end of this wall has to be because this door going clear story but over here instead of having a tiny little soul plate between this section of wall and then the end section of wall I can just make this one long run and, and make that stronger there. So that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, let's uh, start on this side, I guess. And let's get the dimensions for this window. Um, probably going to skip past here and not explain all this uh, because um, I've already explained how I did the, uh, the framing uh, on the other side, on the other wall of the house, the other long wall. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably just blast through this and then come back and kind of explain what's going on in this section once I've, once I've redrawn it. Here we go. Okay, so instead of trying to select this wall, let me start that again. Okay, so I want to grab this piece of plywood <clears throat> right here from this uh, this group on this side, on this wall, and I want to copy it over there because I have some custom dimensions in this piece 
<clears throat> that took me a little while to put together, and I just want to make that, I want to hasten that process. Um, so let me do that. In fact, I can really just do that for all four of these bottom pieces <clears throat> right now. And I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. It's going to save me a little bit of time. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here is um, I'm going to move it over, make a copy of it, lock it to the red axis, move this over, it looks like I'm there. Just to be sure though. Sure, I didn't actually get to see that snap, so now I'm going to see that snap. Okay, so now I can see that I have all of this on this side. Looks like I actually have, oh, look at that. Just exposed some geometry that I had hidden that I didn't see. That's part of the fender or something? Yeah, this is just geometry that's on this piece of plywood that I didn't see. See, I got this piece of plywood selected. Got some a couple lines that I don't want that were hidden, so I want to get rid of those. Whoops. I have to edit that component first, get to the entities, and I can delete those too. And that should have deleted them over here as well. And it did, because they're still copies of the same component. So the first thing I need to do is is uh, these are still part of the existing group that I had made, so I want to explode that group. And then I'm going to unselect these four guys that I just copied over, holding down the shift key. <coughs> and then I'm going to right click and make group again for that wall. Uh, no, something just happened. Try that again. Okay, so select. I'm going to select the entire group, and then I'm going to unselect. Hold on a second, didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to edit the group. No, I'm going to select the entire group. I'm going to explode, and then I'm going to shift click to unselect these four pieces that I just created. Or I just copied over. And now I'm going to make this a group again, just on that wall. So now these are separate. They're not part of that group anymore. We've got that wall over there. Let's see if I can show this a little bit better. We've got this, over, this wall over here that is the group it always was, and we have these separated now. Um, so this is really helpful because I have all these cutouts that I made and the spacing of the plywood from this wall that I want to maintain on this wall but I just need new rough openings to be cut out so in order to solve that um, I'm just gonna go into each one of these components edit them and I'm just gonna first go through and just pull all these faces up so that I get rid of the rough openings I cut in them. See, I've already made a mistake. I've already, I forgot to make them unique. Problem I always do, so now the other components on the other side <coughs> have been modified, so this is an easy fix. I'm just gonna undo back until I get rid of those, and now what I need to do is I need to go and select, control click these four, and make them unique. And for some reason, Justine is shaking her head at me. I'm going to assume that is a loving shake, and that she means no, no bad news with that. Okay, so doing this again. Notice now I'm checking, the framed opening on the other side is all good when I made that change. Let's go through and change these.
Okay, last step on this one is just going to be to... We need to just erase that extra little geometry lines we got there. Just to make it one solid component again. The way it would have been if we had created it from scratch here. I'm going to edit these components and E for erase. Pan around with H. Add another line here. <coughs> Don't know where it went. Ah, it's over here. Still not another component. Okay, and then we got the two lines over here. Okay, so now now I got uh, my full sheets of plywood all set up here and now I'm gonna go do the exact same thing I'm gonna do it for these sheets up here and the reason I didn't do it for both at the same time is because then if I had this up here it would have partially obfuscated my view <coughs> um, of pulling this this uh, face up so I didn't want to do it all at the same time so I'm just gonna now go into this group select these four sheets going to move them over lock them to the red axis copy pull them all the way over here make absolutely sure that we snapped to this line I'm just good to do that I'm just gonna again lock to the red axis and boom that's just to make sure that we're on the right plane. <clears throat> now these four are still selected so I need to do a couple things. I need to... they're still part of this group so what I need to do is I need to explode this group again and then I need to unselect these four and then I need to right click back on that group and make it back a group so now we're back to our existing wall being a group. These four are free and unique. Uh, they're not unique yet, I shouldn't say that. I need to right click on these four, or sorry, shift, uh, control click on those four, right click, make them unique so that they don't, when I make changes to these, they don't change the ones on the other side. Uh, and now I'm good to go. So now I can pull those faces down and get rid of those framed openings. Get ready for me to make the brand new framed openings that I have roughed out on this side of the wall.